A woman with flowing hair wrapped in a white robe had the lower half of her body transformed into a fishtail. She is the legendary mermaid. An earthquake swept her from the bottom of Lake Tanganyika into a rocky cave on the lake side. The rocks crushed her lower body, trapping her and preventing her from escaping. Nearby villagers who were fishing found the mermaid and offered her to the local wealthy chief. When the wealthy chief was about to reach out to hold the mermaid with his bare hands, the villagers stopped him. The villagers explained that the mermaid possessed a unique ability by touching a human's body. She could erase their memories. At this time, the newly appointed tribal leader, Jabari Mwamba, who was young and handsome, arrived. His bracelet on his wrist was as clear and delicate as water. The wealthy chief, wanting to bribe Jabari Mwamba, led the group to the pond at his homestead. Jabari Mwamba walked ahead of the group, and the mermaid gazed at him from the platform her eyes were clear and sorrowful, and Jabari Mwamba stared at the mermaid for a long time. The wealthy chief suggested to Jabari Mwamba that the mermaid's oil could preserve youth for years and was a priceless treasure. Jabari Mwamba understood the hidden meaning the wealthy chief planned to use the mermaid to extract oil. Jabari Mwamba, using the wealthy chief's bribes and evidence of tax evasion as leverage, exchanged for ownership of the mermaid. Under the night sky aboard a small dihau, Jabari Mwamba watched as the mermaid slowly swam into the lake from a distance. The wealthy chief, watching the mermaid swim away, promised to capture her again and kill Jabari Mwamba. The mermaid reached out her hand to him, and Jabari Mwamba slowly extended his hand as well, and this sealed their fate for 400 years. Many years later, the handsome young man before you is the same one who lived 400 years ago, all because of one touch with the mermaid's hand. He traveled through time to meet her again in the modern era. Now, in this era, he is nothing like his past self. In the present, his name is Kato Jafari. He bears the same face and is like a chameleon. At times, he is a charming player in the game of love, and at other times, he is a kind-hearted thief in the world of deception and illusion. He is a master trickster skilled in the art of deception, effortlessly playing different roles. He is an expert in hypothesizing and tricking his targets with ease. On this day, he, along with his accomplices Omari and Tafari, was targeting the inspection staff. They disguised themselves as elevator repairmen to sneak into the unit. As they were stopped by security at the entrance, Kato Jafari quickly analyzed the situation and used his sharp trick. He easily deceived the security guards and successfully entered the building. Kato Jafari and Omari quickly entered the office while Tafari went to the rooftop and used a computer to control the entrance traffic lights, buying them time. Confidently, Kato Jafari and Omari teamed up to impersonate prosecutors during the inspection, gaining the trust of the owner of an investment company. They tricked her into transferring her assets into their account and then flew off to a beach resort. On the plane, a beautiful flight attendant told Kato Jafari about the last mermaid in the world, said to reside in this lake. The mermaid found a bracelet worth 11 million at the bottom of the lake. The mermaid showed up again, gazed up at the sky, and put the bracelet on her wrist. At that moment, an earthquake suddenly struck. The mermaid desperately swam forward, but the massive wave swallowed her instantly. When she woke up, she realized she had been washed by the waves. Curious, she stood up and looked around, sensing something was wrong. She glanced down and discovered her fishtail had turned into legs. Driven by curiosity, she jumped back into the lake, and her legs turned into a fishtail again. It turned out that when the mermaid left the water, her fishtail would turn into legs. Excited by this discovery, she swam around joyfully in the lake. Then she saw a man standing and quickly hid underwater. Kato Jafari seemed not to notice her and turned away. Little did he know the mermaid had set her sights on him. While Kato Jafari was resting, a sudden noise woke him up. He went to the living room to check, only to find food scattered everywhere. Then he noticed the door to the wardrobe was open. 
When he walked in, he found the room in disarray. At that moment he turned around and saw a pair of legs. Shocked, he fell to the ground. Gathering his courage, he pulled back the clothes, and to his surprise, found a beautiful woman hiding inside. The man let out a sigh of relief. He asked who the woman was and how she had ended up there. The mermaid didn't answer instead, she used the clothes to cover her face. The man looked closely and realized she was wearing his clothes. He became very angry and shouted, which prompted the mermaid to take a fighting stance. The man stepped forward, trying to get his clothes back. Feeling frustrated after being sneak attacked by the woman, he moved forward to demand an explanation. The mermaid kicked him again. By the time the mermaid emerged, the man was a bit annoyed. He decided to let it go, thinking it wasn't worth fighting with a woman. At that moment, the mermaid noticed the lake outside the window and ran toward it at full speed. Understandably, she may not have seen glass before. For safety reasons, the man tied the mermaid up and called the police. He also took pictures as evidence. He tried to open her hands to see what she had stolen, only to discover it was just a shell. The man laughed at the sight. The police eventually took the mermaid away and the man reviewed the pictures he had taken as evidence. Suddenly he noticed the bracelet the woman was wearing looked unusual, so he quickly sent the photo to a friend to investigate. At this moment, the mermaid who had left the lake for the first time was filled with curiosity about the outside world. Back at the police station, she started playing with the tissue box, which made the police very angry. They yelled at her, but in the next second, the mermaid punched the police officer. The mermaid picked up a gun from the floor and all the officers dropped to the ground in fear. Finding it boring, she went back to playing with the tissue box. Meanwhile, the man was flirting with a girl when he received a message from his friend informing him that the woman's bracelet was worth at least one billion. Shocked, he covered his mouth in surprise, then immediately left without looking back, abandoning the girl for the sake of the bracelet. Kato Jafari headed to the police station to rescue the mermaid. He told the police that the mermaid was his wife and that he had only called the police because of a fight they had. However, the officers didn't believe him. At this point, the man noticed the police were nice to hypnosis, so he took out a lighter and performed some tricks. The officers fell into a hypnotic state and envisioned a scene of Kato Jafari and the mermaid getting married, convincing them of their relationship. Finally, the mermaid was released. Kato Jafari apologized for what had happened earlier and extended his hand to shake hers as a gesture of peace. But the mermaid, completely unfamiliar with the outside world, didn't understand the gesture. Realizing there was no point, the man bluntly asked for the mermaid's bracelet. To his surprise, she immediately assumed a fighting stance. Seeing the familiar posture, Kato Jafari became nervous, recalling how she had overpowered him before. Unsure of how strong she really was, he decided to switch tactics and softened his approach, offering to take her shopping instead. While waiting at a red light, the mermaid saw the figure on the light and started mimicking its exact pose, leaving Kato Jafari completely surprised by her behavior. When they arrived at the market, the mermaid was immediately captivated by the colorful decorations. Having never seen an elevator before, she was so frightened that she kept stepping back as its doors opened. Seeing her hesitation, Kato Jafari confidently picked her up in a princess carry, drawing curious stares from onlookers as he brought her to the second floor. Once there, he noticed her bare feet were covered in cuts and bruises, so he chose a pair of high heels for her. However, the mermaid had no idea what high heels were and looked around cluelessly, unsure of how to wear them. Seeing her confusion, Kato Jafari sighed and decided to put the shoes on her himself. Next, they moved to the clothing section, and as expected, the mermaid didn't understand how clothes worked she simply put a dress over her head, causing everyone around to laugh. Embarrassed, Kato Jafari quickly pushed her into a changing room to avoid further stares. After she was dressed, 
The mermaid looked at herself in the mirror, utterly amazed at her reflection, stunned by her own beauty. However, when she came out, Kato Jafari was nowhere to be found. Left with no choice, she wandered around the market, eventually following a clown entertaining children. When Kato Jafari returned to find her, she was already gone, so he frantically searched until he found her in a corner, licking a lollipop with wide-eyed fascination. Kato Jafari approached her, scolding her for wandering off, and then asked if she was hurt, which the mermaid interpreted as genuine concern. Little did she know, Kato Jafari was only interested in her bracelet. They soon went to a restaurant, but the mermaid, having never used utensils, grabbed the food with her hands, leaving Kato Jafari embarrassed as he covered his face. After she had eaten, Kato Jafari decided to impress her by showing a magic trick with his lighter. The mermaid was completely mesmerized, unaware that he had just swapped her bracelet with a fake. Now that he had the priceless bracelet, his mission was technically complete. He took the mermaid to a crowded area, told her he needed to use the restroom, and promised he would be back soon. Naively, the mermaid waited for hours at the same spot, not realizing that Kato Jafari had gone home, packed his bags, and planned to leave her behind. By the time the market was closing, two elderly women noticed her still standing there and guided her outside. Meanwhile, as Kato Jafari was driving away, he suddenly remembered the mermaid's innocent expression and felt a pang of guilt. Reluctantly, he turned back to the market to see if she was still waiting for him. When he arrived, he was shocked to find her standing in the exact same spot, her eyes filled with hope. Overcome with guilt, he decided to take her to a hotel to make up for his earlier abandonment. At the hotel, the mermaid was captivated by everything on land. She began playing with the key card, repeatedly inserting and removing it from the slot with childish glee. Frustrated, Kato Jafari took a shower, but couldn't stand the water going on and off as she kept playing with the card. Eventually, he came out, snatched the card from her, and placed it somewhere safe. As he sat at his computer, the mermaid, filled with curiosity, reached for it and began shaking it as if trying to make the images fall out of the screen. Kato Jafari, nearly driven mad by her antics, decided to ignore her and went to bed. Left alone, the mermaid entertained herself by mimicking Bruce Lee's moves she'd seen on television earlier. Morning came quickly, and Kato Jafari received a call from his boss, informing him that an old couple he had previously robbed had tracked him down through his phone and were on their way to catch him. Realizing he had to flee, he quickly packed his things and bolted, leaving the confused mermaid behind. However, a moment later, he rushed back as his pursuers had already arrived at the hotel's entrance. He tried to devise a quick escape plan but soon found himself surrounded by gang members. In a moment of desperation, Kato Jafari crafted an improvised trick, using a fake ticking time bomb to terrify the gangsters. The tough men immediately hit the floor, giving Kato Jafari and the mermaid a brief window to escape. However, they were soon spotted again, and the chase resumed. During one narrow escape, a gangster managed to catch Kato Jafari, but the mermaid effortlessly threw the man several meters away. They eventually found a bicycle, and with the mermaid happily waving to passers-by, they pedaled away. Her obliviousness to the danger they were in, however, didn't last long. The gangsters closed in, and she sprang into action, eventually facing them all by herself, executing moves she'd seen in her late-night movie watching. In the end, Kato Jafari managed to take down a few thugs himself but turned around to see that the mermaid had already defeated the rest. Just as they caught their breath, a man with a gun approached, pointing it at Kaito Jafari, who was forced into a car and told the mermaid not to follow him. But she hopped on a bicycle and chased after the vehicle, leaving everyone stunned. With incredible speed, she overtook several cars, causing shock among the gangsters inside. Kato Jafari, 
struggling to control the steering wheel and the commotion, managed to jump out of the car. Narrowly avoiding capture as he took a leap from the bicycle, but the gangsters weren't giving up, and they hid in a nearby garden, hoping to stay out of sight. However, the mermaid, noticing they were still being pursued, took it as an opportunity to show off her fighting skills. She charged at them with confidence, while Kato Jafari tried to scold her for being reckless. Ignoring him, she dragged him along, swinging from tree branches and playfully interacting with the garden surroundings. At one point, she even gently brushed leaves out of his hair, creating a moment that felt almost romantic. They continued to evade capture by escaping to an amusement park, where the mermaid, ever the foodie, was drawn to a snack stall selling ice cream. Observing children grabbing ice cream cones, she mimicked their actions and took one, causing the stall owner to demand payment. Completely clueless about money, the mermaid turned to Kato Jafari, who quickly paid for her cone. She took a tentative bite of the ice cream and was immediately enchanted by its taste, savoring each bite as if she'd discovered the most magical treat in the world. Desperate for cash, Kato Jafari called a friend, arranging a meeting a meeting at a church. However, he quickly discovered his friend was also a con artist and realized he'd need a clever ploy to get money from the woman. Introducing the mermaid as his wife, he fabricated a tale about her losing her voice due to illness, earning sympathy from everyone present. Just as the story took hold, the mermaid began speaking, ruining his lie. Flustered, he pulled her aside, asking why she suddenly started talking. To his surprise, she explained she'd learned to speak overnight by using his computer, leaving Kato Jafari speechless. Their strange adventure continued, eventually leading them to a beach where Kato Jafari reminisced about his mother. Unfortunately, the gangsters found them once again, forcing them to run into a cornfield. They were finally cornered at the edge of a cliff, with the river stretching below them. Kato Jafari, in a last-ditch attempt to protect the mermaid, lied to the gangsters, claiming he'd stolen her bracelet. Angered, the gang leader prepared to attack, but the mermaid, realizing the danger, looked towards the river, her true home. The gang leader, furious and prepared to strike, took a step closer, and the mermaid, glancing back at the water, decided to take a leap. She grabbed Kato Jafari's hand, and together they jumped off the cliff into the water below. The moment they hit the lake, her legs transformed back into a fishtail, and Kato Jafari, stunned, realized for the first time who she truly was. Seeing her in her true form, a wave of awe washed over him. But before he could process, the mermaid sensed his surprise and decided to shield her identity. She reached out and touched his forehead, erasing his memories of her existence. Kato Jafari, now unaware of the mermaid, soon found himself alone, washing up on the shore as she swam away watching him from a distance. Despite her resolve, the mermaid felt a pang of longing as she disappeared back into the lake's depths. Kato Jafari returned to his life, unaware of the past, but on his birthday every year he felt an inexplicable urge to visit the lake. One day, while at an aquarium in the city, he caught sight of a figure behind the glass a woman with flowing hair and sorrowful eyes, tapping on the glass as if calling to him. Kato Jafari, unaware of who she was, felt a familiar tug in his heart. The mermaid, who had traveled tirelessly across the waters to find him once more, looked at him with the same longing from centuries before, hoping he'd remember her. But Kato Jafari, with no recollection, looked away, leaving her heart broken. Yet, fate wasn't done with them. Over the following months, they crossed paths again and again, her memories intact and his soul drawn to her, though he didn't know why. Each encounter brought a faint sense of familiarity, tugging at memories that lay hidden deep within him. One evening, at the same lake where they had first leapt together, Kato Jafari found himself alone under the moonlight, staring out at the water. The mermaid surfaced, watching him, and this time, she decided to take a chance. She reached out and touched his hand again, hoping to unlock his memories. In a rush, fragments of the past came flooding back to him moments from the 400-year-old curse, their first encounter, 
and the night they had shared under the stars. He looked at her, recognition dawning in his eyes, as he finally remembered the love they'd shared, the promises they'd made, and the lifetimes they had been separated. With his memories restored, they spent hours on the shore, sharing stories of their journeys and the lives they had led apart. Determined to break the curse that bound them, they searched for a way to stay together beyond the confines of the water and land. Their connection grew deeper as they continued to meet secretly, each stolen moment drawing them closer. But just as they thought they might have a chance, the wealthy chief's descendants, still bitter and seeking revenge after all these years, discovered their reunion and threatened to separate them once more. In a final act of defiance, Kato Jafari and the mermaid fled together, determined to escape the reach of their past. They journeyed far, through foreign lands and across vast rivers, evading capture and living in fleeting freedom. Each sunrise brought hope, and each sunset reminded them of the challenges they faced. They vowed to stay together, no matter the cost, and with the strength of their love, they forged a path toward a new beginning, unbound by time and untouched by the hands of fate. Their story transformed into a legend that rippled far beyond their secluded village, drifting along with the river's currents and whispered through generations, from one lakeside town to another. Sailors spoke of the mysterious couple who were said to wander the shore on moonlit nights, their silhouettes entwined, forever watching over those who ventured near the water. As tales spread, people began visiting the shore to catch a glimpse of the fabled lovers, hoping to witness the love that had endured time, curses, and countless lifetimes. On certain nights, the water seemed to shimmer with a special glow, and locals would swear they heard soft laughter and murmurs carried by the breeze. The village embraced the legend, cherishing the tale as a part of its identity, and young lovers would often walk along the shore, hoping that the couple's blessing might bring them the same timeless bond. As the years turned into centuries, monuments were built along the coast in their honor. Artists painted scenes of a beautiful woman with flowing hair wrapped in a white robe beside a man with steady, kind eyes, both standing against the backdrop of an endless lake. Poets wrote of their love, singers composed ballads, and storytellers spoke of the promise that had transcended all of life's trials. The mermaid and her beloved became symbols of unwavering commitment, a beacon of hope for anyone who had ever believed in the power of love. With each retelling, their legend grew richer, drawing in visitors from distant lands who came to marvel at the story and feel a part of something greater than themselves. Meanwhile, beneath the surface, the mermaid spirit watched over the lake, her presence woven into every current, her laughter in every wave that kissed the shore. Kato Jafari's spirit was said to reside among the rocks and sands, his love anchoring the mermaid to the world she had once left behind. Together, their spirits danced with the tides, their essence an inseparable part of the lake's timeless rhythm. Some nights, children claimed to see two figures dancing in the moonlight on the water's edge, disappearing just as quickly as they appeared, leaving a trail of gentle waves in their wake. Centuries after their story first began, their descendants now a proud lineage scattered across lands and waters would gather on special occasions to honor the legacy left by their ancestors. They lit lanterns along the shore, each flame a tribute to the love that had made their lives possible, and let them drift out to sea, a thousand tiny lights floating across the water in remembrance. Their daughter's family grew and thrived, her children and grandchildren carrying on the gifts of intuition and kindness passed down from the mermaid. They became healers, sailors, artists, and dreamers, each one touched by the legacy of love and resilience that had defied all odds. As time continued its relentless march, the story of Kato Jafari and his mermaid became inseparable from the history of the village, a part of its heart and soul. People forgot where the legend had started, or if it had been real at all, yet the sense of magic remained, an unbreakable link between the land and water. New generations grew up hearing tales of the lovers who walked the shore, believing that if they listened closely enough they could hear the mermaid's laughter mixed with the water's song, and feel the presence of Kato Jafari's protective spirit watching over them. 
The legend of the mermaid and her beloved, once a mere story, evolved into a symbol of eternal love, an enduring testament that some bonds are meant to last forever. And so their story, like the tides, carried on an endless loop of love, sacrifice and devotion that had become a part of the world itself. This story teaches us that true love transcends time and circumstance. The love between Kato and the mermaid not only bridged 400 years but also overcame the customs and obstacles that stood in their way. It reminds us that genuine love always finds a way, no matter how long the journey or how great the challenge is. True love not only brings peace and happiness but also inspires us to make sacrifices for each other and stand together through joy and sorrow. O oh Allah, bless us with your love and mercy. Grant us the strength and patience needed to nurture and honor true relationships. May you bless us with beautiful bonds and keep our hearts steadfast on your path. Give us the character and compassion to embrace love and loyalty in their truest form.